Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Our scenario is entitled Draw the Blinds on Yesterday. It was written by Marcus L. Rowland. Our GM is Mick Swan, and I will be doing the recap as Father Damielos. This is episode two. So, without further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. <clears throat> A letter to Metropolitan Theodoros of Epipistemopolis, Greece. Evlogite, your eminence. It would seem that divine providence has manifested itself in your delay to appoint a new priest to our parish in the wake of my supposed demise. My disappearance remains a mystery to me, and I cannot explain how this has happened. From my perspective, we left on time from Athens airport and arrived in London without mishap although, as I now recall, there was a bit of turbulence. It was not until shortly after our arrival that we were informed that we had disappeared for nearly three weeks. As you well know, it became what they call a media sensation, and the parish phones have not stopped ringing. The parishioners of St. Hieronymus have all been reassured, and we conducted a service of thanksgiving upon my arrival. My secretary, Elpida, has done her best to rebuff any publicity-seeking reporters, and I am sure that public interest will die down very quickly. There is one thing, most strange, that I would like to mention. Many of the saints of our church have warned that the demons reside in the air above the earth. And the book of Ephesians in the Bible states clearly that the devil is the prince of the powers of the air. These are, of course, a description of things comprehended in the minds of earlier generations, who may have lacked the words to describe what they encountered. Regardless of the terminology, there are things, entities, far too strange for us to describe, things malevolent and cruel that exist around us, and they are probably up to no good. There was a woman. I am told by some of the other passengers that she was very lovely, that she looked like a movie star. I don't remember her on the plane, but then I'm not so easily distracted by a pretty face. When we were in line to go through customs, my fellow passengers and I observed her proceed without hindrance to the front of the line and speak a single phrase to the guards, who immediately let her pass without official clearance. Likewise, in the claims area, she avoided the media in a similar manner, and outside she cut to the front of the taxi line unhindered, and off she went. She was without regard for any of the people around her, and yet no one seemed to mind. Once again, perhaps by providence, while driving into London, we were caught in traffic, in close proximity to her ta taxi. I should explain that one of my parishioners had brought the van, and because of the long lines, we offered to drop some of the other passengers as a, a gesture of hospitality and friendship. Anyways, as we waited in traffic, curiosity overcame one of the passengers, Mr. Rod uh, Lib Lib Lisbon. He exited the vehicle in an attempt to get, as he stated, an autograph. But when we retrieved him from the street, he could not remember anything about the encounter. It was as if she had put some sort of spell on him. I thought that that was the end of it, but I was later contacted by another of the passengers, Mr. Bathington, with whom I set up a meeting early the next day. He and a group of other passengers wanted to pursue the situation further. I offered them some advice, but I did not join them. They tried to locate the driver of the cab based on his license number. They eventually did locate him later in the day and discovered that he too had had his memory wiped by the, uh, from the, of the incident. <clears throat> he could remember nothing of the cab drive, except that uh, he finally woke up in front of the British Museum. Now, they have asked me to join them at the British Museum for some reason. I go, 
because they asked me, but I do not really intend to get involved. If the woman is a witch, or if she is possessed by some evil spirit, who am I to judge? We are not witch hunters. You know that I am a sinner and an arrogant man myself and prone to pride. My lack of humility before God renders me useless in this capacity. You are my spiritual father, and so I ask your advice and counsel in this matter. I, of course, ask your blessing and prayers for the health and safety of my parishioners and indeed of all of mankind. With love in Christ Jesus, Presbyteros, Damielos Grigoritis, St. Geronimo's Parish, Norbiton, London, England. Thank you very much, Tom. So, um, we find ourselves then uh, on the cusp of uh, visiting the, the British Museum. Um, is there anything anyone wants to do before that, or can we jump straight is it, to that? Is it September 3rd? Uh, yes, it will be now, yes. Which is a Thursday, yes? Um, I, I believe it is, yes. So are we going to the museum the day after we met at the parish, or are we going on the same day? Uh, you're going the following morning, you arranged okay. to, uh, to go there. I will be, uh, I will be meeting you there. Um, and if you don't mind, Andrew is probably going to tag along. He is my driver. I'm not okay. exactly sure why you want to meet, why we are going to the museum. But I like the museum. I've been there many times, so... Shall we jump forward to that then? Um, by 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 your various means, you arrive at the uh, at the museum. I don't know how familiar anyone is with the the British Museum, but um, it's a large, imposing neoclassical building. Well, we're all Londoners, aren't we? So I think all one, 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 one or two of you um, will not three everybody. Of you, I believe yeah. three three of you are tourists. We have a Canadian and two ah okay two Yanks. Yes. Mr. M Messrs. Uh, Nielsen, Fletcher, and Lisbon. Yep. Are not locals. Let's go check out this museum. Well, it gives us an opportunity to show you around. It's, it's both a library and a museum. They have all of the things that they appropriated from other countries and brought here, uh, which is why most of the world is pissed off at them. <laughs> yeah, I could, could kind of see that. It's where we my buddy told me something along those lines. Especially Egypt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's renowned for its um, Egyptian collection, its um, Babylonian collection, and of course, um, the Elgin marbles, which are uh, still the subject of controversy. Um, Belonging as they do really to the, the people of Greece. That's not a hint, by the way. The Elgin marbles have nothing to do with the cow. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> just just in case you think I'm steering you towards them. No, but um, we're going to look them up after we're done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you, you, well, you arrive at the, the, the British Museum um, and on entering the building, there's a, um, a large en entrance hall. To your left is a cloakroom, and that then leads down to the uh, British Library reading room. Ahead of you, I believe it goes into the Egyptian section first. Uh, there are steps, uh, very impressive, large flight of steps leading up to the first floor, and to the right, um, another wing, I believe, for older documents. I think that's what it was in, in the 80s. Um, yes, uh, directly ahead of you is uh, a desk manned by uh, a couple of members of staff, sort of ahead and just to the left, I believe. So my I question is, why are we here? 
are we looking for something? Perhaps well, we are hoping to see the the woman you had spoken of. Yeah, I think that was this was our last lead for the woman. So the cab driver dropped her off here at the museum. So I think we figured we would show up to the museum and ask if anyone had seen her, which would have been now I think two days ago. Well, what what are we going to see? Have you seen a beautiful tall Greek woman? Well, there she stood like out enough that we all recognize her. Here. Uh, it seems though that anybody who actually directly saw her and talked to her does not remember. <laughs> but I, it, did, it did occur to me last night that if there is a way we could get the manifest of the passengers that were on uh, flight uh, 1743, then we could definitely narrow it down if we see a woman's name. I can, I say, well, I can easily, I can go and get that information. I have the connections at the airport. Well, perhaps. Um, I uh, I would like I would love to do a big tour, but maybe after we're done finding this beautiful red lady in the red dress, maybe I'll go do it after. And I go and I exit trying to hail a taxi to go to the airport. Okay. Um, well, so are we all just turning around and leaving again? <laughs> No, let's look at the museum. It's a beautiful there's museum. No, there's, no, there's no problem getting a taxi. I'm impressed with this. Um, but it, it, it's quite a long trip. It's going it's to take you about an hour or so to get to the airport. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. And I basically say, does anybody else want to come with me? Anybody? On a long, boring trip back to the airport? No. <laughs> I mean, are we really that interested? She didn't do anything to us. Have any of you received witch's marks because she was nearby? I don't think so. I don't know I anything about that, that there. I am making that up, my friends. I, there's no such thing as <laughs> witch marks. So, since no one else... That's a funny one, Padre. Since no one else has want to join me, I'm going to go by myself. Okay. Okay, well, we'll come back to that because uh, for a while you're going to be in a, in a taxi. Perhaps yeah. there's also... I I don't know what to say. Perhaps she uh she works here. Let's keep our eyes open for her, for her. You guys got a better look at her than I did. And was she she was wearing a red dress? No. No. No, I don't know where the red dress came from. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Mr. Francis Nelson has red dress in his mind. <laughs> All right, so let's we walk around. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, look at these pictures. There is a big picture over here, and a little yes. itty bitty picture over here, there are and lots another of little bitty one over there. <laughs> lots of statues. Lots of cabinets full of things. Um. It's very interesting. It's a very good museum. Is there a um, information desk or a security guard by the front door? Yes. I would like to go there. Okay. Um, first, I guess the security guard first, and I'll say, excuse me, sir, have you were you on duty uh, two days ago? I think it would be uh, Tuesday. Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm on duty every day. Yeah. I know you stand here and look at thousands of people a day, but I'm curious if there was one in particular that you might remember, a very attractive woman with a green scarf on her head, sunglasses. We, 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 see, we see lots of lots of attractive women. Don't, don't we, Terry? Hey, hey. Uh. <laughs> Smirk. Okay. It too was a long story. right. You, what you did? You, have you lost someone? Yeah, we're just trying to, to track down a lead on this this woman. Um, to uh, to tour the museum, do you actually um, 
can you just tour it or do you have to purchase a ticket? Um, is there anything like that? Any sort of record of people that have been through the museum? Um, well, I think if you want to, if you want to go use the library or look at any of the books, you have to sign in. Um, otherwise, um, no, you just, you just wander. Well, there's a, there's a couple of, um, couple of wings that are, uh, that are shut at the moment. Um, Excuse me, but is there a way we can find out the list of the staff that works here? Uh, well, I don't know. Who are you? Oh, I'm just... Uh, we oh, This woman that we're looking for, we're pretty sure she's Greek. And we seem to think she might work here. But uh, Well, I mean, I, 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 I can't. You'd have to write to the museum or something. I see. Unless, unless you're the police. Are you the police? No, no. Do I look like the police? I mean, police? I, 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 I wouldn't. I am, I am God's police, my friend. <laughs> no, you're one of those, eh? Mm, Terry, uh, got the radio. Well, like I say, I mean, if if it's someone who used the library, they would have signed in for that. Um. I mean, we, we do tours, but you don't have to you don't have to sign in for that. You just wait until the the tour guide comes around. Has anything unusual happened in the last two days? Like, uh, for instance, anything disappear? Anything that would be newsworthy that hasn't made the papers yet? Um, I don't know. Something. something what was someone said something, something happened in the library? One of the, one of the librarians had a turn or something. Fit or something. I don't know. I don't. We, we don't really talk to them. I mean, we, we, we talk to the other security guards. Sometimes we talk to the tour guides or the like, librarians and curators and that. They they keep themselves to themselves. They're a bit snooty. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's it, it's it's a major tourist attraction, mate. We have weird things happening all the time. We get all sorts of nutters and. Perhaps we should just wander around. We had a bloke in here a couple of weeks ago, so one of the statues was talking to. Nutter. <laughs> that is why we don't let statues in our church either. They're graven idols and everything, <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> so, my son, you said that you uh, one of the professors took a turn for the worse. Uh, no, not one of the professors. Just one of the uh, one of the librarians in the in the uh, reading room. What to get a paper cut? No, no, she just went all like OP or something. All sixes and sevens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit but too much to drink. Well, yeah, it could be. Um, what was it uh, Ernie? Ernie, uh, he does the back gate. He reckoned that it's like. It, he said it's probably like uh, it's one of those eating disorders, you know, where they don't eat enough and they, they get all dizzy. And she's she's pretty skinny. What was she reading? One of the big books, small books? No idea, mate. Demonic possessions? Nah, you wouldn't. You have to. That's in the. All the weird stuff is uh, they've got like a restricted. Yeah. And she wasn't back in the. In the, was she doing research? I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, she was just a, a librarian. But I mean, you know, all the the, the, the restricted. I don't know what she could be doing with the restricted stuff. Because what I hear is that most of it is like, um, uh, they call uh, erotica. Well, posh, posh porn. All oh, right. Full of that's it. that's pretty Full good. Uh, filthy, they reckon. So the librarian, she took a turn for the worse, and did you just did they ambulance her out of here, or did she walk out, or carry her out, or? Well, we've we've got we've got like um, medical staff on site, you know, just you know first aid staff, and uh, they couldn't find anything wrong with her, but um, I think they they gave her a couple of days off or something. Like I say, I don't I don't know the details of it. It's just you know in the, in the I was up in the staff room. Having a cup of coffee yesterday, mm -hmm. and someone someone said something about it. 
all I really know. What day was it? Tuesday? Uh, when was it, Terry? Tuesday? Yeah, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. The same Tuesday day that... Tuesday same afternoon. Day that, same day the Greek bird came by. That might be... Well, like like, like, like I say, mate, there's, there's like hundreds, of, hundreds of people walk past us every day, maybe Oh, thousands. too right, too right. No, 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 no. Don't, I don't pay much attention unless they didn't cause trouble. I, I'm, I'd rather, no, I mean, no. you know, ask questions. I mean, to be honest, we'd rather just sit here and not be bothered. But most totally of the time, I'm just sitting right, here waiting, right. you know, counting the minutes until my next break so I can go and have a, a bag and a cup of tea. But Smoke them if you which, got them. Which, which, by the way, for any viewers watching, is, um, is British slang for cigarette. Yes, yeah. we all know this. Yes. He's not going outside to have an illicit liaison. No matter how much he wants to. There's nothing wrong with a little buggery now and then. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with the, that. The, 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 the British the public schools are say that. built upon it. Uh, well, I'm just sort of looking around. <clears throat> did the woman who passed, uh, did the woman who was ill, was this around three or four o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it was, a bit, it was about tea time, yeah. Mm. Perhaps we should go speak to some of these other librarians. That's what I was thinking. I yeah, think I'm well, going to head over to the library. I know more, more about well, I'm, sure, I'm sure she has a boss, you know, somebody we could talk to. Yeah, I doubt, I doubt whether you get anyone like that and talk to you. Oh, they don't five come out of their office. Five or a tenor, they'll get people talking. <laughs> Not in there. Yeah. Uh, people at, at that level, the ones who, who do any of the that. All that people who, run, people who run the departments, you never see them. Uh, we never see them. Now they've got their own their own staff room and everything. Could you just point us in the direction if we wanted to talk to her people? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's um, down there. It'd be to your left down there. Um, much, keep, right? keep going um, through the first bit. That's the, the cloak rooms. Um, you come out in the central hall, and it's the big um, worst. It's in the it's in the centre of the central hall, big domed thing, and you can't miss it. Yeah, and what's the toss name we're going to ask for? Um, I couldn't even tell you who the who the chief librarian is, mate. You know, just ask for the ask for the I'll just do stars. what I normally do. Ask any walk. librarian; they'll tell right. you what happened. I'll just do what I normally do and walk through and act stupid. The only Thank thing I know so about that library is that um, they're, they're one, one of their rules. You have to wear a tie. Uh, no, no. You you, um, you you can look at um, when you look at books. You're not allowed to put them back. Well, I'm you, have fine them, you have to leave them on the table when you leave. You're not allowed to put them back yourself in case you put them in the wrong bit. Oh, maybe that. Out. Maybe they. Maybe that. Whatever book that bird was reading. Maybe it's still out there on the table. Right. <clears throat> I know two days ago, I doubt it. But um, I, like I said, maybe I'm we got lucky and they were. Lazy. We we pop in there now and then, and uh, you know, sometimes at lunchtime we'll pop in there now and then and uh, read read the paper or something. You know, they've got all the papers in there. But I'll see if Samantha Fox is on page three again, right? It's, well, I mean, look, it's it's all old books, mate. Oh, you know. Too bad. You know, it's not it's not even modern books in there. It's all old books. I don't know why anyone goes in there. You wouldn't happen to have a copy of the today's paper, would you? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we've got a copy of the Mirror. You mind if I uh, mind if I take a look at? It? Well, you can have a look at it. Don't take it away with you. I haven't finished oh, well. reading it yet. <laughs> right. On. So I'll go ahead and take a copy of the paper and I'm just going to look for any articles that uh, I just kind of curious what people have been writing about uh, as it relates to the disappearance the last couple of days. Okay. Well, there's, I mean, there's a small article about it. Um, tucked away on, you know, page seven or something. The, the general gist of it is, is that the authorities still don't know what happened. People have been questioned. 
Um, they've been attempting to get hold of the, the, the papers. Have been trying to get hold of uh, people from the the flight. Um, there's a um, there's an interview with uh, a man called Russell Archer, who was uh, a holiday maker on the flight. Russell Archer. Yeah, and there's, an, there's another interview. It also mentions mentions at. Um, it quotes an anonymous member of the flight. It says someone who re refused to give their name. Uh, and in both it, in both cases, it's a very vague, non-committal answer. Oh, we didn't know until the plane landed. Nothing was out of the ordinary. We just had uh, a nice holiday. Is there a name of a specific reporter who drew up the article? Um, Keith Mills. All right, so I'll hand the paper back to him and say, you know, appreciate it, mate, and just walk down the hallway towards the, where you pointed us for the library. Okay. It's, uh, well, it's, it's rather beautiful, the British Library. Although this isn't the modern British Library. This is what the time. <clears throat> but the time is called the British Museum Library. And it's uh, a very impressive reading room. It's uh, it's it's everything you imagine an, an old library to be. So I'm just going to toddle down toward the uh, the library where he pointed us to, and start looking for figures of authority. They're all behind oh. the desk. Yes, there are. I think the desks are in the. Uh, the center. And that makes it very easy. Ooh. While everyone's shuffling off to the library, I'm just going to kind of look around and keep my eyes open for anything that uh, strikes me as uh, standing out or otherwise. But I don't necessarily see much, but still well, keep my eyes I mean, open. It's packed, it's packed full of people. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are loads and loads of people in there. Some people are um, sightseers milling about. Um, others are um, seemingly more scholarly, sitting at tables. Um, some leafing through a book, some with big piles of books in front of them. Uh, there are a number of people you take to be uh, librarians who are wandering back and forth. Um, some of them have, have trolleys full of books. They're loading up books from the tables that the people have left there. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a busy place. In the um, it's basically, if you think it's it's, it's circular, um, the the walls are covered in bookshelves lining the 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 the, the whole place. Um, above that is a sort of um, dome. The roof is a dome with large windows set in it above the, the level of the, the bookshelves. Um, between the bookshelves and the central desks, you have um, reading tables and um, cabinets full of um, file cards. In the center, you have... Um, the uh, the desks that you can see there in the middle, which is where the uh, li librarians are. Now, in addition to this, um, there are also um, the stacks, which are not accessible to the general public, um, which hold even more books. Um, it is said that every book, uh, every contemporary book published in the uh, the English language um has a copy lodged at the British Library. How accurate that is, I, I don't know. I think uh, Cam's just going to probably be uh, just awestruck looking at everything because he's never been in a place like this before and just kind of... It is, it is, it is, it is one of the great libraries. He's kind of losing himself in the place here. 
Well, in most of the reference material, you can't even get a hold of. You'd have to have somebody get that for you, and they would. Oh yes, yeah, so you can't. You can't just go and. They just go and wander the the, the, the no. shelves, the 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 the, 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 the shelves. And the, the they all wear white gloves, and yes. You go. You go to the desk, and you request a book. The book is brought to you. You read the book, and then they take the book back to where it belongs. That's that's the deal. There's, there's very much a way of doing things. And for a mm. lot of it, you need a permit. Yes, yes. There are diff different grades of permit, and for some things, you, you will need to sort of have um, academic... Uh, I, my mind's gone blank, and I can't remember the word. I was for. Yeah, you'd have to have academic credentials and uh, credentials is the word probably thinking, probably yes. like three days notice before they would uh, give you permission. Same yeah. as the same as the Paris Library. Hmm. These are rare and 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 valuable books. So circling back around here, the, heard the cats with the cowbell a bit. Uh, Corey's going to get the manifest. We're wandering aimlessly through the museum. Well, weren't and... we going to ask if the uh, who the woman who was who became sick? Yeah, I mean, we're just I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here. Um, there are, there are several people manning the desk, so I'll just uh, waddle up to it and. Give a rap with my knuckles. So, pardon me, pardon me. Yeah, yes, sir. Can I help you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, quick question for you. <laughs> quick question for you, love. Yes, sir. Somebody got sick the other day, right? Sick, sir. Somebody yeah. got sick here the other day. Oh, you Marjorie, that are, are, you, are you a friend of hers? I might be. You might be her friend. It seems a little vague, sir. It depends. You, you know how relationships are. These things. Oh, you know. Sometimes you're their friend. Sometimes you're not their friend. Sometimes you're you're sleeping on the couch. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes she throws your stuff out the second floor window. Is she all right? Um, I, I believe so. She's she's not here today. Did they take her to um, hospital? No, no. Someone, someone, um, someone, uh, someone's replacing her in her section at the moment. I don't know who we've got over there. I think it's. Um, do you know who's over in Marjorie's bit? On the... No, over on, on the, in the map section. No, I've no idea who's replacing it. Could you? Could you? Oh, I'm sorry. Could you point me toward the map section? And I just want to see what Marjorie might might have been working on. It? Map section, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, it's, um... I don't see a map sign anywhere. No, no, it's, well, it's, 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 um, if you see the, 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 the there's several desks over there. Um, it's, uh, it's the second one along. There's, uh, oh, it's, uh, well, the, do you see where the elderly gentleman's waiting? There's a, there's oh. a gentleman in a, in a, in a Donegal tweed coat. All us old gentlemen, we recognize each other. We're part of the right. same club. I'll right. go on. Thank you, Ben. Right. Very kind. Coat for this weather, I'd imagine. Very kind. Very kind. But, um, yes, where that gentleman's waiting. That's it. if you if you go to that desk, um, someone will, um, whoever's covering for her, will 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 attend to you. Too kind. Too kind. Thank you so much. Not at all. So I'm still going to play the doddering old man, or the, and uh, wander over to the map section. Okay, well, um, stand around for 
quite a while. I mean, it's, it's, it's coming Not on a lot 10 of minutes service going on. Of some, someone comes back with um, with a folder and uh, takes it over to a table with with the old man, and then returns um, to the desk and um, and notices that you're you're waiting there. Uh, can I can I can I help you, sir? Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. I was wondering if I could speak to Marjorie. Oh, Mar Marjorie's. Um, I'm afraid she's she's unwell today, sir. Oh. Is, is it something I can help you with? Maybe just just only if you can. Too kind of you. She was working on something when she fell ill. Would you happen to know what that was? Um. Well, I, I can. Uh, could you could you just give me a moment, sir? I just um, absolutely I, right here, waiting out. for you. Got right here, book. waiting for you. Absolutely. Note in a book. I said, well, um, uh, 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 we 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 have to fill in this book when when anything's removed from the collection. Um, uh, uh, before she, she she was ill on that was that was Tuesday, wasn't it? Um, right. Right. Yes. Um, well, yes, I can. I mean, and he, he leaves back a few pages in the book, and uh, runs his finger down the list. This is um, so. Yeah, that would that would be um, yes, yeah, sir. That would, that would be um, four o four W A. She was looking at that's um, where would that be? That's um, I'm in Wiltshire, I think. In that section. Is that, if that's any help to you, sir. Could could I see that map, or could you show four, me where that? Four or four WA, sir. Um, yeah. Yes, yes. Just a uh, what was one of the ordnance survey maps, sir. Um. I'll uh, yes, I'll I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go and uh, get it. Would you Would you like to take a seat and wait here? Thank you. Me? Oh, my dogs are killing me. Yes, thank you so much, so much. Thank too kind, too kind. And and he wanders off. Um, I had a quick question, Nick. Without um, even the slightest semblance of haste. Did you say that the old guy that was just getting a map was wearing a coat? Yes. And that that seemed unusual in this weather? Yeah, it's quite a heavy coat, but I mean, old people do sometimes wear I, uh, big coats in warm weather. I, I just kind of want to see if I can see the guy's face, the old guy's face, as, as uh, Bathington is doing all of this. Yes. Um, well, yeah, he's um, sitting at a table. Um, he looks like a very nondescript elderly gentleman. Okay. Um, um, as I, I'm going to sort of wander past him. What? What's? What's the? He's looking at a map. Yes. Um, what's it a map of? Um, it's uh, a map of the county of uh, Barsetshire. Um, showing the region between um, Barchester and um, Silverbridge to the uh, the north west of the city. Okay, that sounds like either an important point of information or a complete red herring because you know the area. <laughs> All right. Other than that, I'm just gonna. I don't know why we are here. So well, it takes it takes upwards of. Um, are the chairs comfortable? Very much so. I might even take my shoes off and stretch a bit. Jesus Christ. <laughs>
The old dogs are barking. You can't bring the dogs in here. Oh, no. Winston's at home. He's fine. Well, after about 10 minutes, he returns. And um, whereas um, previously with the old man, he uh, he'd brought out um, a rather impressive looking um, A2 folder full of old maps. Mm -hmm. um, on this occasion, uh, he brings out um, a similarly sized folder, but it's rather disappointingly wilting on the corners. <laughs> um, and looking into the folder, you see that just sort of, I don't know what you'd call them. You, you know the, the things they use in, um, they're, they're, like the, they're like the things that you'd have in, in an old photo album, the corner pieces. Yes. Points. Got the points. Points. Okay. points. Attached by points in, just in the middle of the folder. It's a great big folder but in the middle of it. Obviously, they just file everything in these folders. You can tell right. that. Mm -hmm. In the middle of it is just a common or garden modern ordnance survey map. But it's uh, it's not a standard ordnance survey map. It's it's a walking map, so it's just quite a sort of a um, uh, large scale sort of a, blow, a blown up area. Are there any markings on it? Pencil marks, ink marks, notes. No, there's a title uh, printed on it, uh, and a picture of a little church. And the title is, please. And the title says uh, Lower Pulford. Wiltshire, Wiltshire LP1. No, I have no idea what that means, but all right. Uh, Is it Nigel anything? Well, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's uh, a map. And now, when you say ordinance map, that's usually top down, I assume. It's not like a, uh, a cross it is. section. I can, I can even, on this occasion, I can even show you the map in question. So it shows um, there's a very, very large scale map. It's just like a sort of local walking map. It seems um, rather a waste of time because there's only um, two footpaths on the map. Um, remind me, this is the map she was looking at when she was sick? Yeah. This, this, is, this is the last map that, that was um, signed out before she fell ill. Signed out, meaning there's a record of the person's name? No, there's no record of the person's name. They don't ask for the person's name. But when a, um, every time a, um, a map is removed from the collection, they have to sign for it. You saw him signing for the, uh, the old man's map. Okay. So the only signature on it would be Marjorie's signature because yeah. someone requested it and she checked there's, it there's out. There's not even a signature. There's just a, a there's like a time, and right? The the, the code uh, code number for the uh, the folder. So what we understanding is that Marjorie was asked by somebody, yes, possibly our uh, our our witch, um, yes, for this map. She showed it to her and then she fell ill. Yes, that would that would seem to be the course of events. Yes. Does anyone here recognize this area? Is it nearby, or is it? Would Lord, I know Lord, that, Mick, Lord, as a Lord, as a as, as, um, a, name, well, as, as a native yeah, as Londoner? A, yeah, as as, as um... between Salisbury and Bristol. Yes, there you are. It's um. To the west of London in Wiltshire, um, probably on the on the edge of Wiltshire. It's edging towards Bristol. That unfortunately does not answer my question of is it nearby. <laughs> um, it would be probably about two hours by train. Mm -hmm. Okay, two and a half hours by train, maybe then an hour and a half by car. Well, two hours in pursuit of. To, to put it into into a context that, that that those of you who are tourists would understand. Yes. Um, Wiltshire is uh, where Stonehenge is. 
okay. Got Salisbury it. is the nearest sort of Salisbury um, Plains, yeah. Um, to, uh, to Stonehenge. So when I was be kind of to the west of Salisbury Plain. When I was stationed at Greenham Common, we used to do some of our maneuvers out in the Salisbury Plains. Hmm. Okay, That's so that right. most of a, a large proportion of Salisbury Plain is, is military land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I slept in many a dirt hole there. All right. So I used start. to go to free festivals on Salisbury Plain. I also slept in many dirt holes. There. <laughs> when you weren't busy <laughs> protesting me, my my presence in your country. Alderson Woods, <laughs> among other places, and Shipton Pellinger. Well, now I suppose that you are going to suggest that we all take a little trip to Salisbury to find a woman who we don't know her name or anything. Hopefully, uh, Lieutenant uh, Nelson will have found out. Uh, this seems to me like we are just chasing shadows, my friends. Well, Padre, I think I can. I think I can back you up on that. Here, I don't. And for what reason? Exactly. I mean, why? Why are we going all in circles with all this well, stuff here? I mean, you know? yeah. I mean, you know, uh, out of game. I mean, we. You know, all of our characters could just kind of go on with their life, right? I want well, very I, I much. Missed, I missed three weeks, and but I'm okay, and I can well, go. The, on. the, um, the uh, tourist characters aren't allowed to leave the country um, because they might be interviewed. In fact, all of you could be at any point be called uh, for interviews as persons of interest, which which you were told by the the interviewing officers. And I mean, by the, no one was injured. You know, we the, the the three people who are from out of country may need to stay here a little bit longer, but they're being put up, as I understand, they're being put up by the airline until this is over with, so there's no monetary loss. I uh, I am curious as to what happened and how we lost this time, but uh, it we don't even know that this person has anything to do with us. We're following a hunch oh. of a hunch of a hunch. I mean, um, I can go back and just keep going to the pub and walking my dog every day and smoking my pipe. Well, if if everyone would would like to make an idea of oh. okay, sure. All right. The only thing I got out of that trip was a cold. Yeah, I passed. Hard success at five. I did not pass. I also got a hard success. I passed as well. Okay. Well, those of you who pass, um, it does occur to you that three weeks have passed um, and you know nothing of what has happened in the world in those three weeks. Oh, we haven't and even looked at the news. Large library. Let's check the newspapers. Yeah, yeah, Padre. I, I, it's kind of occurring to me that uh, you know I have no idea what's going on other than the local stuff in our particular situation. There, that's let's an interesting what, thought. Let's see what Manchester United is up to. My God, that is Good Queen of England now instead of a king. Yes, since the fifties. Um. <laughs> All right. So we asked some of the library um, curators for copies of the last three weeks worth of newspapers. Um, that's that's no problem at all. All that's, of the, the newspapers would be on uh, um, anything going back more than a week. Um, this is this not true. They didn't do it like this at all. But for the purposes of the game, anything going back more than a week will be on microfiche. Oh my god! Because they're really good at getting stuff on microfiche really, really really quickly. Fast. No, like, that's where their that's where their efficiency that's where mm -hmm. their efficiency comes blazing to the forefront. Oh, <laughs> let's get that on microfiche immediately. But but for the last week, you'd have to be looking at hard copies of the papers. Well, let's see if there's anything in the newspapers. 
strange woman cast spell over passengers on airplanes. That's what we're looking for. Everybody roll a spot weirdness. Well, I was going to say, um, you're going to need to roll um, library use rolls. Because ah. you are Never. quite literally using a library. We're reading a newspaper. I apparently. Oh, you're using micro thief. This is. Uh, not I, got, uh, I, got a, I got a two, which is an extreme success, even with my twenty. <laughs> right. So have we'll, you ever we'll, noticed? Have you ever we'll noticed? Mister Banks in charge of the micro fish, since he's so smart. Have you ever noticed in movies people looking at micro fish that the micro fish goes <laughs> and then lands exactly on what they're looking for? Uh -huh. Yeah. It's very convenient. Yeah, whereas, whereas we're talking about actual microfiche readers <laughs> um, in, in Britain thing. in the 1980s. So right. it's all sheets that oh, you yeah. put on a piece of glass right. oh, and yeah. then you haphazardly move around. And if you cough or yeah. <laughs> suddenly twitch, you lose that bit and you end up somewhere else on the page and can't find where you were. So... Right. Um, what stands even, out as we are reading? What stands out to us? Well, even even with a successful role, it um, it takes you a couple of hours to to, to find much. Um, what you do find um, is that there was about five days after the the, the plane disappeared, there was a, a massive flurry of media interest and all sorts of speculation about. Um, terrorist bombings and um, uh, the, the sun was going with some uh, missile attack story and they reckoned it was the Argentinians that, that brought it down in um, retaliation for the General Belgrano or something. Um, after about five or six days, the media didn't exactly lose, the press didn't exactly lose interest, but the, 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 the circus sort of started fading away and most of the stories after that point say um, no new leads in mysterious disappearance of, of uh, mysterious disappearance of flight 1743 um, but mr. banks you do find something that's not directly connected with the disappearance of the um, disappearance of the plane, but it does strike you as uh, as rather an odd um, and, and possibly significant um, coincidence. You find a story. Which is dated August the eighteenth, the same day the plane disappeared, which mentions Lower Pulford. Wiltshire Ghost Slays Two. The Wiltshire Ghost is tonight suspected of the murder of two children, uh, Denny Palmer, nine, and Mark Potter, twelve. In a bizarre attack, police spokesmen are describing as the most horrific crime we can remember. Denny and Mark, who lived in the small village of Low, Lower Poolford, were last seen at 10 a.m. when they went out to play. And an hour later, their mutilated bodies were found by Mrs. Agnes Parker, 47, who is tonight being treated for shock in the county hospital. The Wiltshire ghost was first reported on August 11th when a local farmer, Peter Giles, 39, reported seeing a huge ape savaging his sheep. He fired a shotgun at the creature, which immediately disappeared, apparently vanishing into thin air. Several later sightings follow a similar pattern. Police pathologists have confirmed that the injuries of the children were identical to those of the attacked animals. Tonight, the police are treating the case as murder, but are also investigating the possibility of an escape from the zoo or wildlife park. Other than that, you, um, you don't find anything. Other than, as I say, articles, general speculation about the uh, the missing plane. Well, this is but that, this that is... one just strikes you as rather rather an odd coincidence that you've just found a map 
and yep. this is a story from the same place which occurred on the same day that your plane disappeared yeah perfect so i'll uh so i assume i just kind of stumbled over this so i'll call my colleagues over uh and basically hey hey come take a look at this now, right here in this article, you, you see right here, it says, uh, mentions Lower Pufu. W wasn't that just a map you were looking at? Uh, it appeared that we did, there is some correlation between, maybe between this woman and this monster. Chalk one up for which? Uh, it does seem mighty strange that, uh, this, this woman suddenly takes ill right after looking at a map in uh, of a of a place where they're having mysterious murders and strange sightings and all kinds of things like that. Is is this Pulford area kind of like a rural area? Oh yes, yes. Just judging by the, the just going by the map, you can see that it's it's quite a, a small village. <laughs> The church. I mean, the picture of the church on the front of the on the front of the thing looks quite modern. By by which I mean sort of twenties or thirties by the looks. Well, same to me. We got a couple of options. We can keep following up on this Marjorie and see how she's feeling, or if she remembers anything, and who asked her to pull out the map. Uh, Head over to Lower Pulford. Which is quite a distance away. Per perhaps we should just alert the police that there might be some sort of connection. Yeah, but where's the fun in that? Come on now. <laughs> ah, Mr. Banks. <laughs> the fun is in not becoming involved in a horrific, terrifying adventure that ends up getting us all killed or going insane. But I see the appeal. <laughs> That's why they call it the police notifications of Cthulhu. So we can... <laughs> Uh, while you're while you're debating this, I'm I'm going to um, uh, flit across to Heathrow. Yes. Yeah. Where uh, Mr. Nielsen has uh, has arrived. Man, that was a long taxi cab ride. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. They went there. Well, you're, you're see, you're not you're not a local, so they went the long way. <laughs> Yeah, as they, as they always do with the meter running. They ran up the meter on you. Yeah, oh. they, always, they always do that. So what's the damage? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, 54, 75, sir. So. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, yeah, sure. I saw you coming. <laughs> Okay, so I I pay the taxi, and then I will uh, walk in, and I will see uh, where I can talk to. I'll go to the uh, who's ever at wherever I can go to the desk or something like that. Well, there's yeah, there's a um, there's an information booth or. Um... Yeah, information booth. Um, I talk to uh, whoever at the uh, information booth, and I'm like, oh, no. "Hi, oh, I was wondering if then. you can if you could help me uh, with something." And I I show them my I show him my uh, badge. Yes, sir. How can I help you today, sir? Says the woman behind the desk, who, who has a curiously deep voice. <laughs> I was wondering if I know it's a it's a pretty big uh, favor to ask. You. Uh, anyway, I can get the uh, oh, what is it called? the 
the manifest for the flight that I was, the flight we we're on, uh, seven on, just give me a second. Whatever flight the. Flight, flight 1743. 1743. Um, I, I, I really don't know, sir. Um, is there any way I can, uh, who can I talk to? Um, well, I, I could um, pro probably someone from, from airport security. I could try and get someone. Can you get somebody you. from the airport security, please? Okay. She um, she has to look it up in a, in a little book and um, taps out the number. Hello, Brian. Brian. I've got a gentleman on the desk who who'd like to talk to you, please. It's about um, it's about flight seventeen forty three. Yes. Yes, another one. Yes. He he says, "What what what do you need? What do you want?" I need the I need the manifest. It's it's of important importance. Um, Brian, Brian, he says he needs the manifest, and it's of important importance. You know, honey. can I ask who you are, sir? I I give you my name. And I, Fr oh. Lieutenant Francis Nelson, I really need it. He says he's a Lieutenant Francis Nelson and he really needs it. He says, I bet you do, sir. Please. Really, really? Are you are you connected with the case, sir? Yes. He says he's connected with the case, Brian. I've. He says he's going to send someone down. Thank you. I'll be waiting right here. Yes. Just out of interest, sir, if you were to wear a straight jacket, <laughs> what size would you need? <laughs> I don't well, need a straight jacket. You, 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 uh, uh, you, you're, you're kept waiting for quite a while. In fact, about 20 minutes. Um, most of which time you spend just occasionally... Uh, Glancing back and forth at the woman on the desk, anxiously and awkwardly, as you both sort of try and ignore each other. <laughs> well, she's patently trying to ignore you, even though there's no one else at the desk asking any questions um, or, or demanding her attention. Um, eventually... Um, a rather scruffy and uh, o overweight gentleman in uh, a security uniform uh, comes down and um, he approaches the desk, chats with her for a moment. She, uh, she gestures in your direction. He visibly sighs and uh, and walks over to you. Um, you, I you, said, sir? you must be Brian. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I need the manifest. It's Do of you great. Know? It's great importance. Great importance, is it? Yes. 
Right. Um, well, I was wondering I mean, if we, you we, could help. We can't, we can't just give out sensitive flight information to um, every uh, Tom, Dick, or Leslie who comes in uh, asking for it. Um, I show him my badge. That's very pretty, sir. But I mean, that's that's like an American Air Marshal's badge, sir. Yeah. Can well, I, I get? Mean, do you, do you have? I mean, are you connected with this case? Yes, I am. I see. And uh, how how are you connected with the case, sir? Um, I say, well, there is this lady on the flight. Um. She seems to be acting suspicious. I want to know what she her... seems to be acting suspicious. Does she? This yes. Lady. And where yes. did where did you encounter this lady, sir? He, he takes out a <sighs> small the... notebook, and starts making notes at this point. She was on the flight. Well, she now. You probably know that. I was... <clears throat> On the flight. Suspicious lady. Does she have a name, this uh, suspicious lady? In what way was she suspicious, sir? Uh... She, well, she is just, I really need you to get my information. I will, it's of great importance, importance. Right, well, I'll, um, I'll see what I can do, sir. If you'd just like to, um, uh, actually, I'll tell you what, um, <laughs> you can, <laughs> this, I mean, if you wanted, I could let you make a, a fast talk roll, <laughs> but you need. Quite a good push it, score. Push the roll. Push the roll. <laughs> I'll tell you, at this point, you would need probably an extreme. <laughs> really. Okay. No. If you'd like to... Um, wait I'm not. For a minute, sir, I, I can just... Uh, I'll see if I can get someone who's uh, be better equipped to help you. And uh, he just walks off back to the, the desk and uh, picks up the phone. And uh, surprisingly quickly, um, two police officers arrive. And uh, they, they, they have a brief chat with him and he, he, he gestures over to you. And... Uh, they, they they come over and the the slightly older of the two police officers uh says uh, um uh, are, you, are you having a problem sir no i'm not having i'm not having a problem oh this uh, this gentleman seems to think that you uh you were um in, interested in uh flight 1743 sir all right, Brian. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, what 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 is it you you needed to know, sir? You did the, the, you, you 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 requested a, a flight manifest. Um, yes. May I ask you your connection to the case, sir? I basically say I was I was on the flight. You were on the flight, sir. And your your name is Lieutenant Francis Nelson. Lieutenant Francis Nelson. 
I see one male. Yes. Right, you were on the flight, sir. Yes, and uh, and, and, now, and now you carry on, sir. There is this lady in a red dress. Um, obviously, that we need. I need to talk to her because there's something wrong. Well, in in that the 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 plane disappeared for three weeks, sir. Yes, if there's something wrong, I mean, and I think she has something to do with that. I see. Uh, you 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 feel that she might be um, a terrorist or uh, connected to a terrorist terrorist organization? Yes. I see. And uh, how did you come by this information, sir? Well, she was. I was just. I keep popping her up, and she seems very, you know, like she was hiding something. She I have hiding evidence. something, what, like a um, an explosive device, or uh... I wouldn't say explosive device. Would you not, sir? What? What? I mean, what? What sort of device is it you're talking about? There's. I, like I said, I'm sorry that. There's nothing to be sorry about, sir. We're just trying to get to the bottom of things. If you get me, if you get me the manifest, then we will. Then I'll be okay. Then I'll be on my way. Um. Could you could you just give us a moment, please, sir? <laughs> Don't. Um, um so there's a bit of uh banter between the uh the two police officers and brian and uh the two police officers stand with you for a few minutes while um brian wanders off and uh he comes back about 10 minutes later and uh, actually make a luck roll. I make it. That's good. Um, he comes back about 10 minutes later with um, a newspaper. I says, uh, well, this is, this is the, this is the telegraph. Uh, from Wednesday. I thought we'd thrown this out, actually, but uh, it, it was lying around in the office. Um, I think there's a there's a list of the passengers in here because everyone thought you were dead. So I mean, I can't give you the manifest itself, but I mean, it's all here, it's all public, if you want it. Um, You know, I say, I'm, I'll be quite happy to give you this uh, if if you just um, leave. <laughs> okay, I take it. Yes, we've really got better things to do, sir. I like. I am extremely. I'm going to point out this at this, at this moment. Sorry. I will point out that unlike other British police, if you've ever been to Heathrow Airport. The, the police at Heathrow Airport have MP5 submachine guns. <laughs> right? Airport police are armed. <laughs> I'll just point that out. They've got big guns. So <laughs> they're quite intimidating. 
And, um, you know, you don't need to make a psychology roll to, uh, to, to be aware that, that they, they, they think you're pissing them about quite a lot and they've got better things to do than deal with you. Yes. The, the, the English are not well behaved in airports. Thus, thus our police have machine guns at airports. <laughs> okay. I not armed I outside, but machine guns at the airports because that's where it all kicks off. Fa Father Damielos is saying a prayer for... Uh... <laughs> Lieutenant Francis Nelson. He doesn't know why he suddenly feels like he needs to say a prayer, but I mean the new, the newspaper he's given you has as a as a pretty complete rundown of everyone believe as it says in the article believed to have been lost on flight seventeen forty three from Athens. Okay, I take it and I. Leave rather fast. Okay, the one, the, the the two policemen follow you to the the taxi rank and sort of linger about the door until you get into a taxi cab. Okay, I take the taxi cab. I don't know where I will probably head back to the museum. Okay. So um, while you're in the cab, we will uh, jump across to the others who are currently in the museum. Oh, look, what I found in this old newspaper. <laughs> we should get in a taxi and go get um, Nelson. It's going to take you a whole four hours to get there and back. Fa Father Damielos, um, Make a library use roll. All right. <laughs> oh, I got a 99. Apparently, I'm... Uh, you you I don't get sidetracked. Like... Um, you can uh, only read you, the Bible. You, <clears throat> yes, you, you, uh, you, you get sidetracked with... Um, find an old copy of the Apocrypha lying it, on it a... It was written in Aramaic. What do you mean an old copy? It's in our Bible. He comes across some of the erotica and faints. We have, we have 80 <laughs> books in our Bible. All right. Well, you, you come across a, an, an interesting commentary um, on the uh, Gospel of Thomas. Ah, uh, that old thing. All right. Yeah, this is... I'm not going to find anything here, but I'm not really sure what everybody is looking for. The, uh, the, the, the commentary on the Gospel of Thomas is uh, sitting on top of a copy of uh, Lady Don't Fall Back it's by Darcy Sato. <laughs> ah, this looks interesting. It's lurid cover. Yes, well, the English, you know, they put anything in their libraries. Imagine that. Killed with a typewriter. For science. Um, All right. So, do we find actually the newspaper? Or are we going to wait four hours to get it? I think in the in the time it takes. Um, well, if you're going to wait there for him to uh, for uh, Mr. Nielsen, Lieutenant Nielsen, to to turn up again, um, if you were going through all of the newspapers connected with that, you'd find that several of the newspapers publish a list of the people. Uh, believed to have died. Well, here's the some, list. Some of them, the complete list. Um, the Daily Mail only publish a list, uh, published a list of uh, British people on the flight uh, who were believed to have died, and and not anyone else. But if we if we find a, a, a list of all of the passengers, how many of them are Greek? Um, Greek last name. About there's about two hundred and thirty people on on the. The flight, um, about seventy of them. Seventy of them, and how many are female? Uh, well, roughly half. Thirty-five, we'll say. Yeah, about 
30 to 35 people. 35. And uh, any of them have unusual Greek names other than well, Papadopoulos? Um, and how many were traveling alone? Well, I was going to say um, there's um, there's a large group of nuns that were on the... Uh, ah, well, they would all have the same last names because the monastics, they take the last name of the monastery. Ah, not just Christos because they're married to, to Christ. No. But, um, okay. Uh, so well, it, it, so you would recognize that, yes. Yeah, um, these are all nuns here. Six or seven women traveling alone. Most most seem to be couples. Women seem to be part couples. Mr. and Mrs. this, Mr. and Mrs. that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other than the nuns? Let's say their last name is... Uh, um, Lucas. St. Luke's Monastery for whatever um other than the nuns there's no there's no one with a um hmm. what is the uh the female equivalent of monastic monastic uh, in greek they're both called m monastic moni oh, so mon just, no, monastic. and they both go to um, monasteries so they don't use the word convent or nun does the manifest show where they were traveling from, uh, traveling to, like if they had a connecting flight or if they terminated there at London Heathrow? The, the, man, the manifest would probably show that, but the, <clears throat> the, the list in the, in the newspaper doesn't. So we're just interested in people that terminated, of those six to seven women who terminated, that was their last leg of their flight, and we're not interested in women who were going to catch a connecting flight. Yeah, that, that information isn't offered by the, the news. Right. Oh, it's not. Okay. No. But no, it, just, it really gives just a list of the people believed lost. In the... if, if Lieutenant Francis has the manifest, then maybe we will see connecting flights on there. Mm -hmm. We'll keep our fingers crossed that he got the, uh, the, the, the manifest. Hopefully he didn't run into trouble with the police or the... That one guy. What's his name? Brian. Oh, Brian. You don't Everybody want to have Brian, Brian on your case. Mm, no. The man they called Brian. A man called Brian. Well, he was written up in Forbes' most interesting people last year, I believe. <laughs> I think they made a movie about his life. Life of Brian. It's true. It's true. It was a very funny movie. Brian's not your Messiah. He's a naughty boy. Always look on the brightest side of life. That's right. All right. So. So are we going to move forward? Wait for Lieutenant Frank. Well, maybe he can call us. Do they have telephones in 1987? But they're attached to the ground. Yeah, you can't just. Well, I mean, yeah, there, there are um, there are um, mobile telephones in, in 1987, but um, they resemble um, the uh, walkie-talkies of the 1940s. They're, they're the big things, yeah. Yeah, they're big black bricks, mm -hmm. and the the battery lasts for about an hour. And they have a great big air, an aerial that looks like a police baton. And uh, that well, they're referred to in the in the eighties as Wally phones. There is a certain social stigma in being seen with one. It is also possible that are there any names on here of females who are traveling alone, who do not have Greek class names? Perhaps she was married to. An Englishman, or there are also um... yes. It's not an easy. It's not going to give us much. There are five names that fit that bill. Well, I don't think she is a nun because nuns don't wear uh, red dresses or other colored dresses. 
She wore a green scarf on her head. You said yes. Mm-hmm. Green scarf and sunglasses. That that's that's cool. really the only thing that they mentioned. Yes, mirrored sunglasses. Though. Yeah. Couldn't you check that list of names against who checked out the uh, who checked out the map? Or would Marjorie's name be the only one in the manifesto? Marjorie, Marjorie. There's there's no, no, no names on there. Marjorie would have signed next to it, yeah. but there's, there was no name for anyone. Um, Mr. Fletcher and Mr. Lisbon, would you like to make an idea roll for me? Nope. Clue is still uh, enamored with the uh, with the building. Yes. Rod. Is it Rod or Rob? It's Rod, isn't it? Um, Mr. Lisbon, it occurs to you that you, like many of the other non- British nationals from the flight have been put up in a hotel at the expense of the airline and told not to leave the country. Mm -hmm. So it seems reasonable to you that that would apply to everyone else on the flight. I don't suppose what I have known since I'm since I went to the hotel. Or is everyone from that flight in the same hotel? There are quite a lot of people from that flight at the hotel. Um, it seems unlikely. It's not a huge hotel. It's what these days we'd probably call a boutique hotel. Um, it's quite heavily booked up. Um, it would seem reasonable to assume that other hotels were also used by the, the airline to, to house people from that flight. Um, and, you know, you, you, you weren't given a date by which you, you were going to be allowed to leave the country. I mean, at the moment, you are not necessarily being detained. I mean, you're free to go where you wish and, 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 and do what you want, but... Um, you're not currently permitted to leave the country while this this investigation is being carried out. Did they by any chance, you are a person of interest. Sorry, Karen. Did they by any chance give me a name or a contact number? Like if um, I had questions or, or further details or if I happen to remember something? Or... Oh, yes, yes. You were given the, um, the card. Like a caseworker? Yeah. Uh, well, you were given the card of the... Um, the plain clothes officer who interviewed you. The same guy. Okay. So All right. it I'll is share the information with everybody. Now, those of us who are uh, living in London, mm -hmm. we are still asked not to leave the country. That's right. Yes. So. But some of us have our own residences here. We're not yes, staying. I think. I think. If the, I think the, the 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 official term is that you've been released on your own recognizance. Uh huh. That you're still a person of interest. There is a chance then that this woman is living in that hotel, at least temporarily. Yes, the chance. Yeah, we don't know if she's a native. To the UK, or if she was, we assume she was wasn't. We assume she was not traveling on because she got out, left, and right. went directly to the museum. But there's still only a fifty-fifty shot that she's going to be at the hotel. This is true. Um. Well, everything we've done so far has to do only with a random chance that we find things, and we're getting little bits of information. So once uh, a lieutenant gets here, then we can uh, we can I guess head over to your hotel and sit in the lobby and count all of the people coming in and out, and have a drink in the hotel bar. Yes, we, we can, I'll uh, we bring can. Winston. He's been cooped up all day. 
we, we can jump ahead to, to um, the, the return of uh, the victorious return <laughs> oh look he brought Brian with him no I didn't bring Brian with me did you find anything of important importance <laughs> or impotence as the case may be uh, yes 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 we got that uh, the newspaper already I'm so sorry you went for all that trouble and you didn't get they treat you yeah, badly. Yeah, yeah. We are all going to the hotel to get a drink. Well, yeah, I need a drink after what happened. <laughs> all right. So, do you want to jump ahead to the hotel? Yes. Yeah, by all means. If, yeah. Are we we're at the lounge? Um, just, just, um, just on on the way to the hotel. Can you make a spot hidden? All right. But you'll need you need quite a, a good roll. Oh, I forget Andrew's with us. Oh no, she got. I uh, rolled a hundred. I got twenty-eight. Eighty. That's a miss. I made Spot mine. Hidden. Yes, I made it. I don't so, see anything. So those who made it, what did what did you? Yeah, just barely. Mine was just a regular uh, success, not a hard got, or a oh, super right. hard. I got a hard. You got a hard. Um. <laughs> Two six. Oh right. Okay. Well, who got the better out of the two of you? Well, oh six. Six. Be okay. Oh six would be an extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, you're not entirely sure about this, and it could just be your mind playing tricks on you. But on the way to the hotel, with little else to do, do you find yourself sort of absent-mindedly looking around, taking in the, the, the surroundings, looking at the sights of, of, of London? Looking behind you, the car behind you is quite a way away, and you, you can't really, you're not entirely certain whether your, your, your eyes are playing tricks on you or not. But you get the sneaking suspicion that the two men in the car behind you in the traffic might have been in the library. But then, you know, they're quite sort of nondescript looking men. So maybe they were, maybe they weren't. You're not you're not too certain, but for a moment you just think I've seen them before somewhere. Where am I imagining it? Okay. I will mention it to the others. I think we have a tail. We have a tail now. This is becoming like a spy, spy novel. Uh, you think you've seen them before in the library? I can't be sure, but... If any of us look, do we also think that? Like they look familiar? It, they just look like two guys in a in a car. You can't no one no one immediately comes to mind. You can't really remember anyone who was in the library. No one no one stuck out. Well there were lot, lots and lots of people in there sitting at desks. We'll look at them now, see who they are in your mind, and then if we see them later, then we will have confirmed that they are following us. Maybe they are re maybe they are reporters and they want to ask us about the flight. I'll try the to car, the it. car itself is just it's a very nondescript dark blue Ford Sierra. Okay. Do you think they might be the police? No, it's Brian. No. I mean, it makes sense. If they're suspecting terrorist activity and then they release the people on the plane, it makes sense that they would tell the people on the plane to see where they go. It's possible. Makes uh, sense to me. Listen here, cab driver. Take us directly there. Don't go by way of Paris or something. 
Just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> yeah, all right, mate. Yeah. No need to get shirty. Did you see the football last night? Of course, we wouldn't watch it. Is it cricket season yet? Uh, I think that's over now, isn't it? I don't know anything about cricket. It would be moving, be moving to uh, the, the Australian season. No, I think down under. I don't know. That's a sticky wicket. I'm going to also try to pay attention as we get closer to the hotel if if they peel off at some point or if they follow us into the parking lot or you know how how closely are they following us if they're following. Um. Well, I mean the the the, the um the car is is a couple of lengths behind you. Um. It's difficult to say. I mean, sometimes it's there, sometimes it isn't. Um, you could have the uh, the cab driver go via um, uh, that street over there, Wilsh- Wilshire, Hemshire, whatever it's called, and then this is see like if one they of my us. Favorite shows? It's like Adam Twelve or Dragnet or something. It's exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Chips. <laughs> Oh, yeah, chips, punch. Who doesn't love punch? Punch was hilarious. The, uh, yeah, the, 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 the cab driver um, continues wittering on. Did you see that ludicrous display last night? The problem with Arsenal, they think they can walk it in. All right. Uh, you, you give it, yeah, so no, you, you end up back at your ho- back at the hotel, um, the Oldie Oak Hotel. Did they follow us all the way to the hotel? Um, not as far as you could see. I mean, that when you pull up outside the hotel, there's no sign of them. Okay, okay. that's that's what I meant before. I was paying attention. You know, there's a there's a couple of cars. Pulling into parking spaces, roughly the same time as you. None of them are like they're they're doing it deliberately. They're like a general cross section of people, of you know, a young woman with a kid, middle aged couple, man on his own. No one, no one looks overly suspicious to you. Okay. Well. Why don't we do this? Let's go into the lounge, but one of us can stay behind in the lobby for a few moments and see if those two men come walking in. As a discreet, you know, just five minutes. If I were going to follow someone, I would see which hotel they were at. I would drive down the block, park my car, come back over, and know that they were in the hotel. It would take five minutes. To throw them off, how do you say it in English? To throw them off the hook? The, tr- the trail, Father. The trail. To throw them off the trail. Okay. Yes, I'm just now, just um, my mind is suddenly consumed with an image of um, a Greek Orthodox priest attempting to subtly trail someone. <laughs> Wearing I'm seeing the same thing. <laughs> if, if I stand make, very, still, if you I know, stand make, very still in a Abbott. corner, if I stand very still in a corner, I blend with every. I'm just black. <laughs> oh, it's that pillar box again. What's it? What's that thing? I just have to hide my face. Nobody can see me. That is the worst looking ficus ever. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go into the lounge area and, and order a round for, for all of my comrades. I feel like we need one at this point. See if they have Uzo. Oh, and, Uzo. and Uzo for the priest, and apparently the the detective as well. Yes, because we haven't had dinner yet. Let's, let's drink Uzo on an empty stomach. That'll work out well. <laughs> that is... 
You, well, I mean, if any if any of you are you watching the, the the door, no one overly suspicious comes in. I mean, yes. these people are coming in um, who are clearly uh, patrons <coughs> of the, the hotel, who are going up to the desk getting their keys. Um, some people come in with baggage and check so into the hotel. Just keep your eye out for the bird. Yes, we will eye out for that, Mister Pathington. Uzo is an aperitif. It is meant to be drunk before you eat. To so wake up the taste. Drink so it on an empty stomach. See what happens. I'll order yes. a round of Uzo, but I'll order one grappa and slide that over to the father just to try and throw him off a little bit. What, do you think I don't know the difference? <laughs> 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 Let's you, see if might you, know have, the difference. you might have fooled me with absinthe because they smell similar, but and I take the ooze and I whoosh, knock it back because that's how you drink it. Mom, well, getting so well, I'm getting a pint for me and a pint for Winston, and we're just gonna sit down and have a rest and watch for the lady. Yeah, grabbing a pint too. And it's Thursday, so yeah, I can eat meat. Good. No, I'll get our own paint too. Perhaps some chicken wings. Oh, American food. I was about to say, do they do chicken wings in London? No, that's um true. well, I mean that's what I feed my dog. Fish wings? Chips. Get some good, get some good the, chips. The fish get don't some, have wings, they have fingers. Get some good crisps. Fish fingers, yes. <laughs> fingers, fingers. It's hard to say. Fish well, get a, get a bag of crisps and call it a day. Well, how long are you going to spend in uh, this, this bar? We'll okay. probably have dinner. Whatever they okay. serve. Um, well, I, I can tell you, 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 you do not see her. Okay. So we got to put together a game plan on where we want to go next. Where do we want to go? We don't have any. To, where, this is a very strange and, and uh, th that we are following somebody we have no reason to follow. Uh, next, you're going to want to go out to uh, a pool for and start hunting for some Maniac who's killing small children. I kind of tend to agree with the uh, Padre here. I mean, it's like uh, we got all this stuff going on, but does it help us figure out what any closer to what happened? But none of it really uh, directly affects us, right? Yes, you see, we're we're not we're not police. We're not investigators. We're just six random people. Who got thrown together on an airplane. I don't think that any of us are qualified to hunt a murderer in uh, in Poolford. But I'm retired. I don't, I'm retired. I don't hunt murderers anyway. Did you ever hunt murderers? No, I was a shopkeeper. I caught a shoplifter once. That was about it. Well, then you have the most experience of any of us. Oh, no. <laughs> Yes. You are our new leader. You do whatever you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. And Winston is your second in If command. nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not serve. <laughs> but we'll pay you exactly nothing to do this. So it's charity, I guess. <laughs> That's where you come in, Father. Uh you know, back in uh, back in the old country, I was paid with chickens. So it's like a dowry, only different. <laughs> yeah, I got eggs and chickens and milk. <laughs> I get paid that way back home with my shop. <clears throat> well, Lots of farms. Is how I look at it. We can't leave the country. At least I'll, I'll come. Our comrades can't leave the country. I can't keep this accent up. They can't leave is, the country. It's very difficult. I have trouble with yeah. it. <laughs> what accent? Um, we get you. Uh, so, so sometimes I forget and I go back to my original uh, Dutch accent. 
Yeah. It's, it's very difficult for me to keep the English accent up. So, they can't leave. We're, I, I mean, I'm a Londoner in this case, but I'm sort of still a person of interest, right? So we, we do have a motivation to get this thing figured out, right? It, it, not so, really. That, not really. Well, I mean, if, if, if you if you ever oh, want to go home. I am home. <laughs> I sleep at home every, oh, yeah, I sleep at yeah, home every night. <laughs> you, are, you are English, so I guess it's not a problem for you, but for the rest of the crew. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. So maybe just to be clear, are we debating the fact whether or not we should play this game or not? <laughs> no, is that where we're it's at? Right kind of, we're it's, so, it's kind no. of how it feels. We are expecting the <laughs> GM to do bad, something. We're expecting the GM to do something to pull us into the story. Okay, we're all waiting. Then. <laughs> yeah, um, take control. We are. Uh, I mean, even if it's just a, a strong curiosity about something, um, I don't well, know. Well, there, See, there that's, is that's there is a very um, if you wanted to establish the identity of that woman, there is a very easy way to do it. A very easy way. Yes. Idea roll. And we've yeah, this is a cop out. So we well, we've just spent it. two hours trying to figure it out, and we haven't gotten anywhere. <laughs> right, so, and we don't we don't really have a hook. We have you know, no hooks. We, we saw something in the newspaper, and hmm, that's interesting. There's a ghost. There's a ghost bear or whatever, you know. Well, yeah, I guess that's kind of where I was going with it is she's the only suspicious person we've seen, and so even if your interest was you just wanted to know what happened to you and you saw this suspicious woman, you know, that would that's really our only lead is finding out her identity. So I don't know if that's, you know, checking the names on that list against who's staying in the hotel or how about was there anything in the newspaper a picture that we recognized? Is that the direction we should go? I hate my there wasn't a picture in the newspaper. Magazine, uh, billboards, hmm. milk cartons. I mean, have you seen this Greek lady? <laughs> uh, have you um, seen this Greek lady? <laughs> cast, cast your mind. <laughs> okay. To the very beginning of the scenario, when you first arrived in London. So I assume she would have been interviewed by the same people who interviewed us. No, she walked right past them. Yeah. No, Cam, no, no, Cam, she was, no, she, no, was no. In, she was interviewed as well, yes. She walked right. past well, the we were um, interviewed and she then walked, she walked past, past customs stuff. Right. She walked past customs. And and Cam got an up close look at her, right, when he went up to the car to yes, she did. Yeah, but he doesn't remember. Yeah, he got his mind wiped. No, was, that was uh, Rod who went up there, right? Yeah. Well, we all remember what she looked like. Do we she need to wipe, ask? She didn't wipe all of our minds, but do we need to ask the guy who gave us the card? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That that would be an avenue of inquiry. But again, it's it's okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it. Oh, say it. Well, the question is why? Yeah. Um, we need a hook. Well, you have met or encountered um, a rather striking looking woman who was uh, on the, the plane who seemingly is, is leaving this... Um, uh, swathe of uh, amnesia, hypnotized or brainwashed or brain damaged people behind her. Well, I have. I wrote my letter to uh, Metropolitan Theod Theodorus. Now, if he tells me that he wants me to investigate this person, then I will do it. 
So if I get a response from him that says something along that line, then I have motivation. I have to do it. So do you want to say that that's happened at least? Uh, we could do that, yes, if that helps you. Okay. I don't know why he wants me to investigate, but now I will investigate. Um, Maybe it's like the Catholic Church where they investigate. Well, I, think, I, I would imagine he thinks anomalies no, or weirdness. They really don't. Well, no, but. <laughs> I, I think it, it, it's more that it's um, <clears throat> it's it's rather unseemly that. Uh, uh, a, a priest is involved with an incident like this, and there were also a number of nuns on the uh, on the flight. And he, he he doesn't feel that he could ask any of the nuns to look into the matter, but not so much. He would like you to liaise with the <coughs> authorities to get to the. Uh... But I could ask the nuns uh, if they saw anything unusual while they were on the flight. It would probably be very easy for you to locate the nuns. Who yeah, the it's some some monastery in London. Very likely. In fact, I might already be familiar with it. So, just maybe not with those particular nuns. Um. Well, Mick, uh, do you want us to do an idea roll or? To get a hint. I think I think it's it's probably best if you do an idea roll. That's okay, wonderful. let's do an idea roll. Get a hint. A ninety-seven. That's a ninety for me. <laughs> <laughs> we are ninety-four. Clueless. Oh jeez. Somebody I made a up. hard. I made a hard success. Nice. You made a hard success, right? Well, for for the the rest of you who who failed, um. You come to the conclusion amongst yourselves um, that probably the best way of finding out her name would be to write down all the letters of the alphabet on bits of paper, uh, <laughs> put them in um, Father Damielis's hat, <laughs> and, and randomly pull them out to try and figure out what her name is. No, this is far too close to witchcraft. I'm not going to do this. Well, it's you could just see it as a variation on casting the sorties, or it's just like a, a it's like a very old Ouija board. So, what was my <laughs> idea, Mick? Well, your idea is that um, you are um, essentially the people who were on the plane. You are um, unified by your experience, and. It would be assumed that that you would necessarily have some sort of interest in the well-being of, of of your fellow passengers. Bonds may have been formed, as indeed they are between between the group of you now. Bonds may have been formed after that flight as a result of this shared experience. So it would not seem out of place if you were to inquire um, about the the, uh, the whereabouts of other passengers. Um, particularly with hotel staff or with uh, liaisons from the uh, um, the airline, and that were you to do that and to try and track down the the, the single Greek women who were on the plane, um, you might be able to establish um, who they were and discount them from your investigation. Also, okay. um, other people who were on the plane may have uh, more information. Um, this is true. And the police who interviewed you may have more information that has come in since you were interviewed two days ago. So here's what I think, based on the light bulb that just popped on over my head. I think that, let's see, get my characters here. I think that we, that Lieutenant Nelson, seeing that he has a modicum of authority left after his encounter with Brian, I think that he should call the 
people who interviewed us and make the inquiry in a left-handed sort of way about the uh, green headscarf and sunglasses woman. I think that we can hang out in the hotel lobby a little bit more to see if we recognize anyone on the plane. Because the assumption here is that uh, there are more than just our people here at the hotel. So we can kind of mix and mingle in the lobby and gain information that way. So that's at least two avenues right there. Thoughts? Yeah, I think that perhaps um, uh, the lieutenant doesn't do very good in asking roundabout questions that we should send him with specific questions to right. ask the Don't police. let him ad lib. I actually, um, I, I like the uh, line of thinking that Father Damielos was going where he was able to basically narrow down to a set of, you know, we'll call them, you know, half dozen women who may fit the profile, right? Yeah, and we've got we maybe, six or seven. Yeah. So, well, it's yeah, very so likely can, that most of the Greek women are staying in this hotel. It's possible. It's unusual that I am here and that this is the place that I'm at. So I would, I would probably go about saying that, you know, up to the hotel concierge and say mm -hmm. we're looking for our friends or something like yeah. that. We could go yeah. down that line of questioning. Yeah. I can also go contact the nuns. Yeah. I can see what they know. Uh, it's probably uh, the convent of uh, St. Mary Magdalene. Because my assumption here is that during, even though it was a short flight, Everybody looks to their right. Everybody looks to their left. Everybody sees other people boarding. There's going to be some small modicum of facial recognition of mm -hmm. other passengers. You just kind of go, oh, don't I recognize you? Weren't you on the flight? So was I. Let's have a drink. Da, 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 da. See what happens there. Somebody might know who she is. That's true. Somebody may have sat next to her. I think I, it is it is probably worthwhile to have an agreed upon story as to why we're asking around about these people. Um so we don't run into the same I don't know, we'll call it creepy line of questioning. <laughs> That's well, a good idea there. As 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 um as the Metropolitan once pointed out to me, I am a polished liar. So <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest that you simply say that she left something on the plane which you have possession of mm -hmm. and you are trying desperately to find her because it seems very important. Right. Father, your your um you are skill at misleading lawyer. people is is terrifying. Yes. It's... <laughs> Probably comes in handy. That's right. But Perhaps you should actually have something that you can claim belongs to her. Yeah. No, I actually think that's brilliant. <laughs> we can use that. <laughs> a rather valuable looking book or a pocketbook. A scarf, a wallet. Uh, well, a scarf, you know. Anything like that. But uh, a, a pocketbook might be very important. You know, that she needs this. This has all of her credit cards in it. But it and doesn't have her ID in it. That's that's one thing, but the ID is missing. Mm -hmm. So we don't know who she is. Um, and, and if we go on that line, then maybe we'll find something. There may be many people in this hotel that know something. Yeah. I just think we I, I just think we need a, a more structured and kind of focused approach next time. And, you know, I, I, out of game, I think we should just think about like what Mick said, the bonds, right? You know, maybe, maybe we, maybe we hung out together in Greece. I mean, maybe lots of those of us who were on holiday met each other at a hotel in Greece. I think there needs to be something else that kind of brings our characters a little bit closer together. Okay. I think it makes sense. Um, all right, so you guys want to stop it there? I think, yes, we should stop it there. All right. Yeah. Our players included Jeff Wilkins, Bill Mize, Corey Heistead, Ford Fitch, Josh Hook, and myself with Mick Swan as the Keeper of the Secrets. 
We're currently producing four shows a week with uh, music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to become a patron of our show, visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps a lot. Like, share, subscribe, and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And uh, be sure to leave us some comments. We really like reading them. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming.